Hi, Jam2. Welcome to Sunday service. How was we miss? Was it fun and good? Great time? Yes. I've been praying for you guys to have great time and fun time, get to know more about God. And also, I did it too with my kids. It was so fun and great time. You know what? We've been learning about God through this vivis. Now we have to live out with God's word. God is great? Yes. He's Emmanuel. He's almighty. He's trustworthy. That I'm gonna live with God. That kind of God, I'm gonna follow Him. Amen. That's why we're here at the church. We are the church. We're gonna worship God and praise God with all our heart. Amen. You guys ready? Let's praise God and worship God. Go. Happy, Happy Summer, summer Jam 2! Hey guys, for online service, make sure to always prepare your hearts and dress nicely and always bring your Bible and your offering and prepare it. And when Sandy teacher and JJ teacher comes out, please get up and do your motions and sing along with teachers. And lastly, when Pastor David asks us to do the activity, please do it with your whole heart. Have a great summer guys. fun online service. Stay safe. Miss you guys. Let's pray Gem 2. Heavenly Father, Thank you for this wonderful Sunday. Heavenly Father, we ask you to open our hearts, souls, and minds so that we may worship you with all of our hearts. Heavenly Father, thank you for the wonderful VBS we had for last five days. We were so blessed and we learned so much about you, Lord. Thank you for all the teachers, pastors, and all the volunteers that work so hard so that we may come close to you and to learn more about you. Heavenly Father, please bless us today. Keep us safe and help us to give all the glory to you. We love you and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I hope you guys had an amazing week last week. I know you did because we had our VBS. That VBS was amazing. Um, that was the first time I've seen that video. And you know, there was parts that was funny. It was parts that, you know, we'd learn things. And the teachers that came out and the pastors that uh, put in the time to make this happen, uh, it was so thankful. You know, I hope you guys are appreciative of the things that, you know, they've gone through to make this happen because it was a really blessing time. Uh, I hope you guys got a lot out of that. And you know, when we finish VBS like this, we are usually very energized uh, spiritually and we ask the question, what's next? So what's next is taking all that learnings from VBS and applying in our lives daily. I know each and every one of you have learned at least something through VBS because I know God has said something to you and we want to make sure that we acknowledge that not you know dismiss it but acknowledge it and apply that in our lives daily lives every day okay um, second announcement so next week August 16th the whole entire education department we are going to have a graduation uh, I know you guys are starting school soon, so um, we are going to have graduation, all the fifth graders that's going up to highway. We are going to have a Zoom meeting, and Pastor David will have details on that. And we will also have gifts for you guys uh, on Sunday. I believe it's from one o'clock to three o'clock. Your parents will need to come and pick it up. And details on that, Pastor David will uh, share throughout the week. Um, third, so when we left, uh, when we were stopped going into church uh, because of this pandemic, uh, we were in the midst of doing Bible time. And I know some of you guys have spent the time to uh, 
go through and finish Bible time and that's amazing that's great and we want you uh, we want to um, acknowledge that so we have a gift for you so if you did finish your Bible time uh, make sure to let Pastor David know because um, we want to celebrate that that's a accomplishment that we want to celebrate okay um, so one other thing um, you know about 10 years ago uh, I took this um, Bible study class and we were required to memorize 10 verses a week and I know not every one of those uh, has stuck with me I tried to do the best I can but those words have helped me so much in my life in everything that I do that you know I just want to encourage challenge you guys to at least spend the time to memorize two to three verses a week um, you can do a lot more I know you know a lot of you guys are capable of doing one a week but you know minimum two to three uh, verses a week and I can guarantee you that if you can do that for a whole year your school is going to be 50% easier after one year and I can tell you give you the reason um, why I can guarantee this uh, this kind of thing next week but you guys have a, a lot of schooling left and you know when you go up to highway when you go up to uh, GPM you still have a lot of schooling left wouldn't it be amazing if your schooling could be 50% easier um, so I challenge you guys to do this uh, if you don't know which verse to memorize, those of you guys who have a wanted book, start from the beginning. And those of you guys who don't, you can. That's what Pastor David's for. You just ask. What memory what verses should I memorize? You know what? What you know? Somebody in my life in Gem Two Age. What What's important? What What are the words that uh, that I should memorize and keep forever in my life to help me in my life? Okay. So with that, I hope you guys have a great Sunday service. Hi, Jim, too. I get to pray for your, us one more time. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time of grace and peace that you have always provided us. Please help us proclaim the victory for the generations of believing the words of your mighty. In the times of all this uncertainties and unknowns please help us understand and please help us obey more and more so that we may be acknowledged in the presence of the God for all of us we bring our offering of humbleness please accept our heart and our soul and our mind so that we may no understand one day that the great is your name in everything in all things please help us stay positive and help us understand the goodness of the love that you have provided us over and over so that we may be stronger in the faith that we live in the daily lives please help us and please guide us in all circumstances that everything works out for the greatness we praise that and we pray that that you will help us overcome all things in proclaiming the name of Jesus Christ our Savior in everything and all things we want to give thanks to all the things that I was never thanked before please help us be more gracious towards all the providings so that we may once again feel the peace in the presence of our Holy Spirit. 
we thank you and we praise you and we want to glorify your name thank you for everything in Jesus name we pray amen We are starting a new series of the message called We Are Family. So we're going to explore the God's plan for the family by learning about the families in the Bible. So when I say family, the word family, what comes to your mind? Happy, joy, or lonely, ugly, sad? What do you think about the word family? When I think about the word family, it feels like, you know, home, homeful, happy, and joy, excitement. Because I have a big family. I have four sisters. I lived with the, uh, my grandfather and parents, so it's about five, four, four, nine family members. It was big. You know, we have small house, but it was so fun. Sometimes we fight. We love one another. Even though we went through a difficult time and hard time, but I, when I think about the word, the family is like home and happy and joy. So today, we're going to talk about a family who had trust God, even though they don't understand what he was doing. So as you look at the Bible, last series, DDD, Double Dog There, the family of Abraham, they live their hometown, the home country, they left a new place. They just settled down, they made a new home. And so many things happened at that place. So today we're going to focus on Genesis chapter 17, verse 16. Everyone, let's read it together. Genesis chapter 17, verse 16, it said, I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. Her? Who is she? She is Abram's wife, Sarah. So she's going to have a baby. But what happened? What's the problem? God's, God promised Abram that many nations would come from his family, right? But there was a problem. Abraham didn't have any children. So God, you're going to bless me, bless through my wife Sarah, then she's going to have the baby. Then she, you know, all the nations come from my wife, my family. You know, but the problem, he and his wife is too old. They were older than your grandparents. Can you imagine that your grandfather, grandmother, nine years old, eight years old, they had a baby. You know, God promised them they would have a child, and they left. Why did they leave? Why do you think they left? Let's look at the verse. Chapter 17, verse 17 and 18. Abraham fell face down, and he laughed and said to himself, Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of 90? Ooh. Then Abram said to God, If only Ishmael might live under your blessing. Oh my goodness, think about your grandparents. We didn't, we didn't usually see a lot of grandparents having babies, right? Very, not often, it's very unusual. It kind of is impossible, right? So God told Abram and Sarah exactly what would be done for their family, right? But they had a hard time trusting God. If I were Sarah and Abraham, it's impossible. I would, you know, just like they laugh. Oh, that's so fun. God, you're kidding, right? Is it possible to have a baby? How old? You know how old I am, right? You know my wife, she's 90 years old. I am one. 100 years old man, how about having a baby? That's impossible. As we look at the Bible, but finally they have the baby. Because we don't understand, we don't understand God's plan. We think that's impossible things, but God promised us, but He accomplished His promise. 
Look at chapter 21, verses 1 to 5. This is amazing how God promises His people that He accomplished. We think it's impossible, but it's possible everything. Nothing is impossible for God. As we learn through VVS, God is almighty, He is great, He is Emmanuel, He is trustworthy, He is the ruler, Amen. That's why these things happen and possible. Let's look at verses 1 to 5. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, as He said. And the Lord did for Sarah what He had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age. At the very time God had promised him, Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Amen. As a family, they just left his in a comfortable zone. They lived together as a family. It was so hard and difficult to believe God and trust God. Why? Because, in, you know, it's common sense. It's impossible to have the baby. But God promised him that he accomplished his promise. Amen. God did. He has done everything. Gem 2. When I was young, I doubt this Bible. Is this Bible right? Is this all true in the Bible? Really happened? Sometimes I don't understand this passage, but sometimes you don't have to understand anything. You don't have to understand everything. Because God promised He's Almighty God, He's great God, He's in charge. He accomplishes what He promised to us. 하나님은 약속을 꼭 지키시는 분이에요. Through this Bible. So Abraham and Sarah's baby, the Isaac, was the answer to God's promise. Throughout the Bible, the God's family is always traced back to Abraham. Like in Matthew, the first book of New Testament, God recorded the family tree of Jesus. The list of relatives is also called a genealogy. Guess whose name on the list is first and second? Abraham. And Isaac. In our story, in our Bible story today, God promised to send Isaac. And God did. God also promised in the Bible, send a Savior. And God did. Many generations later, Jesus was born into the Abraham and Isaac's family. Amen. That He promised to send Jesus Christ and Savior. Then Jesus came to this earth. That he lived just like us and he died on the cross and saved us. Isn't this amazing? Isn't it great how God is amazing? That we don't understand in our circumstance, in our situation, even though right now, because of coronavirus, everything is difficult. It's new normal. Everything is different than before. But God is in control. God is an amazing God. He does. God did everything. He has done so many things for us. Then He's going to control us. Let's look at verse Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Now, therefore, that the Lord your God is God. He is faithful God, keeping His covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who who love Him and keep His commandments. Amen. We can trust God to keep promises because God is always faithful to us. Then God can do impossible things and God can lead us. We can trust God in every area of our lives, especially in our families. Amen. Gen 2. We need to trust God and believe in God. Sometimes we don't understand we don't have to understand anything because God is in control. This is full of promises that He accomplished already that also He is accomplishing through our life, through our family. So sometimes I complain, why should I bond this family? My family is all, every time 
is poor, no money. I'm not strong, not healthy. Why? Why me? Why my family? Sometimes I complain. But you know what? God faithfully led us and provided us everything. Why? Because He promised that. Philippians chapter 4, 19. Philippians chapter 4, 19, it said, And my God would meet all your needs and according to the reach of His glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Gentle, let's trust God. Even though your family having a hard time, God has a plan for them. Just trust Him. He will make it happen in the best way for you, for your family especially. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love and grace, your faithfulness. Thank you so much for telling us that you are accomplished all these promises. Father God, sometimes we don't understand why these things happen to me, my family. But Father God, when in our head knowledge, it's common sense, we don't understand. But we just want to put our trust in you, Father. Because you are God. Father, thank you for being our Father and being a great God. Thank you for giving us great privilege to call you my God, our Father. Because you are God. Thank you, Lord. We love you because you loved us first. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, Jim 2. It's Sam Teacher with this week's sharing time. Um, okay, so after today's message about Abraham, Isaac, and Sarah, I want you guys to share with your friends and family. Um, have, you ever have, have you ever had a tough time trusting God um, in any moment in your life? Um, everybody has them. I don't care who you are, but everybody has a tough time. And there are times when you're not going to be able to trust God and you're going to question God um, in your time of distress. Um, personally, I had the biggest one that I had was when I probably lost my father. I was 20 years old and I remember uh, after he passed away, I had a tough time you know, trust in God because I kept wondering why he would take my father from me when I was so young. Um, uh, you guys probably don't have it to that degree, but there, there's going to be a time in your life when you're going to have a, a tough time trusting God. So, discuss among your friends and family going to be very, very important and helpful to you. Okay, so another question or another topic that I want you to discuss with your friends and family is what are some of the things that you can do uh, when you're having that hard time trusting God? And there's going to be lots of advice that you're going to receive, you're going to probably read about, but for me, you know, I think when you're having that hard time, you're going to have to talk to yourself. And I don't care what you're doing, you're always going to be thinking about that hard time when it comes, when you, when you are confronted by that hard time. So the first thing is talk to yourself. Ask as many questions as you can. Try to find the answers. And if you can't find the answers, the next step probably is you're going to have to look into your Bible. And when you look into your Bible, you're going to find passages where, you know, the answers might be there. Um, and if they're still not in that Bible, then, you know, talk to Pastor David, talk to you know, your parents, but mostly Pastor David or you know, all the other pastors that are in our education department, and they can probably guide you into finding those answers. And then after you find those answers, I'd like for you guys to pray about um, the hard time. But just remember, it's not going to come very quickly. It's going to take some time. So remember, God is Emmanuel. He is with us all the time. And I'll see you next week, okay?
Okay, good luck. Bye. We have memory verse this week, Romans chapter 5, verse 8, and the Psalm, book of Psalm, chapter 23, verses 1 to 3. You know the verses. So, Kim Hyo Young and Eugene's father made a song for you guys. Please memorize these verses and meditate on these verses. Ready, set, go. Surely your goodness and love will 
follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the And I will dwell in the 